Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker review. Today we are going to be taking a look at another set of Star Wars Black Series Titanium ships. If you've already seen, we already took a look at numbers 1 through 5, so now I'm going to take a look at number 6 through 10. It is another fantastic set of releases. Now this is all basically still part of Wave 1. Like I said, the first wave included all 10 ships, so a lot of these kind of were hard to find because they, you know, didn't have like as many of them in each case, but it was still a good set of ships. So let's just get right into it. Like I said in the first review, we already took a look at the packaging. We're not going to take a look at it again. By the way, there you can see the scale I'm talking about where the Star Destroyer is smaller than the Boba Fett Slave 1. So first, let's get to number 6, and that is the First Order Star Destroyer. Same basis on all these, so I'm not going to waste time on that either. This is the Star Destroyer used by the First Order in Episode 7. A much sleeker design of a Star Destroyer than we would have expected, but still has the typical potato chip look. <laughs> The one thing I hate about this one is these weird screws. Like, for some reason, they have these, like, ports throughout the bottom. I don't know if it's supposed to be, like, landing gear, but I don't think I've ever seen a Star Destroyer land. <laughs> this is, like, such a strange way to do it. Like, they could have hit it in the body a little more, or just, like, a little bit of a smaller gap. I have no idea why they did that. It's just basically a gray ship. You see the thrusters on the back are blue with some white in the middle of them, and the Overall back thrust area is kind of a gunmetal gray instead of the gray, like light gray that most of the ship is. It's a very nice looking ship. I mean, like I said, that's, it kind of ruins the silhouette with those ports. That's why I kind of hate it, and a lot of people hate it. But I would, find, I would have to see exactly if this ship did land at any point in any like comic book or anything, and maybe it did have ports like that, but I kind of doubt it. But overall, just a nice ship and a nice kind of modernized design of a classic so you know it was a little popular <coughs> excuse me now let's get into number seven and that is a pretty iconic ship you have luke's red five x-wing from episode four probably one of the most iconic ships in all of star wars this once again like i said has the wings can open and you're better off keeping them open because when they're down, you can see that it does just kind of like flop around all over and it looks pretty stupid. But might as well just leave them open at that rate. This also does have an opening cockpit. If it wants to open, there you go. And it does actually have like the detail of R2-D2 back there. You see it's actually R2-D2 in the pot right there. Got the blue head and everything, so that's a nice touch. It's got a nice kind of like beat up weathered look. You can see there's kind of chips and stuff in the red paint. All the thrusters in the back are painted in gray. Got some yellow on the top, got the red five stripes. Even got some like spiraling gray around the edge of the missile pods, or whatever you want to call them, and some yellow on there too. Interestingly enough, you see the gray sh like stripe thing is on the bottom one on the left and it's on the top one on the right. I imagine that's realistic, but not sure why they did that. The ship also does have landing gear that you can pull out, which can be a pain in the ass to get out sometimes, <laughs> especially these back ones, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to come out, but, you know, you can set it right there if you would like to display it like that, but when you have the base, it doesn't really matter. Just a very nice release. Like, you know, this is pretty an iconic ship in the Star Wars world, so... It's good that we finally got one. Well, not finally, this is in the first wave, but it was definitely one of those kind of essential things to have in a first wave of these to get these going. Now let's get on to number seven. We've got the Y-Wing. Another pretty iconic ship in the Star Wars world. Landing gear's already trying to come down on this one. This one is basically all metal. I should probably point out that most of this is plastic on the X-Wing, except for the kind of nose cone. The Star Destroyer is all metal, and this one is all metal, too. Looks very nice. You can see it even has the detail of, like, the wiring, the brown wiring. Got a little bit of a silver dome. Not sure if that's supposed to be a droid or what. Might as well just pull the landing gear down at this point, because it seems to want to come down, and now it won't come down. <laughs> but, you know. Landing gear is very weird on these because they don't really stay down right. You see how it kind of dangles there, but you can set it down and it will stay there if you get it right. <laughs> but they're so little thin plastic for these metal bodies that they just do not work. 
You can also spin the uh, little, uh, I don't know, radar dish, gun, whatever you want to call this on the top for some reason. I don't believe the, the cockpit doesn't open on this one, or does it? I think it does, but not. Nah, doesn't look like it does, but, you know. Each of them has little features in their own way, and, you know, the spinning radar dish is kind of this one's. See, the back of the thrusters are painted in a light blue. And has all the yellow markings you would expect from Y-Wing. Pretty good release, you know. Everyone likes a Y-Wing, so, you know. I'm sure it sold pretty well. Now let's get on to number nine. I think I might have screwed up the numbering on there. <laughs> Star Destroyer is number six, X Wing's number seven, Y Wing's number eight, this is number nine. And another iconic ship, you got Luke's Land Speeder. This one looks very nice. It's also pretty much all metal. This one has wheels on the bottom, so you can actually roll it if you want to. But it's got some very nice, like, sand dirty weathering on the front. It's a very nice touch. But for some reason, it's only on the top, not really on the bottom, so I don't know why they did that. Also got some, like, marks and chips and stuff on the thrusters. See the thruster? They actually did mold open like it was. A weird feature this one has is you can open this little compartment on the front if it wants to open, which <laughs> these things never do. Come on. <laughs> there we go. And you see there's a little bit of an engine detail under there and a little, like, hood port, or whatever you want to call it. See inside, there's no steering wheel, but it does have molded seats and some of the dashboard and all that good stuff in there. Wheels are just clear plastic, kind of like the port. You see, this is actually an old mold. There was a titanium line made by, like, with some weird name, like Galab or Galoob or something. And some of the molds they did reuse. You see how this one has copyright of 2006 on it, so you can tell that it's not a brand new mold, but... It still fits in with these lines well, and I'm glad they're using these old molds when they're trying to make them new. Because, you know, if they if they're going to make them new, they're probably going to find ways to cheapen them out. So I'm glad they're just using these old metal molds on some of these. And there's a few that kind of degenerate, but we'll get to that later. But this one looks fantastic. Every Star Wars fan wants to have Luke's land speeder in their collection. He's just so... <laughs> He's never want to cooperate. And now, let's get to number 10, and probably the most popular, we got Boba Fett's Slave 1. Everyone's favorite ship of everyone's favorite bounty hunter. You can see the wings do rotate, so you can have it in kind of flying position, or you can have it in landing position. And you see these turrets on the back also do move. Detail on the ship looks fantastic. It's got the kind of green, the red, the white, you know, everything. It's got the, like, chips and all the weathering and scratches on it. They did a fantastic job on this ship. And this ship kind of disappeared really quickly. This is one of those that really flew off the shelves, and rightfully so. I don't know if I can get the lighting on it right, but you can actually see there actually is a Boba Fett in there. Like, there's a molded Boba Fett figure. I mean, it's not really a figure, just molded into the plastic, but... It actually is a driver in this thing. I can't see if I can get a better lighting on it. You can kind of see it in there. See, it even got the helmet, the little, like, optical scope thing. It's got, like, the little, like, diamond shape on his chest. It actually is a full molded Boba Fett in there. So that's a very, very nice touch from the people at Hasbro. Is this an older mold? Where's the copyright on this thing? It's funny, you don't see the copyright on this thing. <laughs> I imagine this is one of the older molds too, but you know. Once again, it was a fantastic re-release and sold very, very well. The ship thing is kind of weird though, because you can't really have it sitting normally on the uh, base. You see, you can sit it like that if you want in landing position. And there is actually a port, you see right there, if you sort of want it in a flying position. But you know, it's that's about the best way you can get it is like that. Which you know, is still not perfectly up as it should be, but you know, it's a little better. I'm sure there's a better way they could have done this, maybe given a different stand or something, but this was definitely a popular ship and one that everyone wanted, so everyone did pick it up. So overall, another great set of ships here, you know. This is a perfect way to start the line, a bunch of some new ships, some old ships, some classics, some new classics, you know, everything people want. So it was another good wave. It was about like a month and then wave two came out, which we'll also be taking a look at. But, like I said, I do love these ships. They got good detail, they got good looks, and most of them are just very nicely made. 
there you can see what I was talking about the scale that you know the slave one is like larger than the star destroyer, so is the X-wing. So you know if you're a scale person, you are not gonna like these ships, but. They're definitely worth your time. Like I said in the last review, they retail for about $5 at pretty much any store you can find them at. And I would definitely recommend picking them up if you can get them. Well, I think that's pretty much all there is to say. This has been a review of releases 6 through 10 of the Star Wars Black Series Titanium. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.